Welcome to the Mercedes Wilson Show. I truly love talking about the things of God. I also love talking about issues that we deal with and talking scripture. Today on the show, we have a guest that will have you thinking twice on all that we know when it comes to the roles of women in our communities and in our churches. Join me as I sit with Pastor Tamara Marcella. You're amazing. Welcome to the Mercedes Wilson Show. It's my hope that every show causes you to open up your Bible and see God in a new way. We want to tackle the real issues head on and find hope in all things. Just like 1 Peter 3.15 says, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give a reason for the hope that you have, but do this with gentleness and respect and we will do just that. Today my guest is a woman on fire Pastor Tamara Marcella is a wife, two-time author, pastor, psalmist, speaker, and a mother of 12, yes, I said 12 children, ages of 9 to 29. Ooh, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Pastor. Thank, thank you for you. joining me today. Thank you for having thank me. Thank you, thank you. So I want to start out with a little bit of your background. Okay. Can you tell us um, where you grew up, where you're from, and did you grow up in church? I did grow up in church. I grew up in upstate New York, Rochester. Um, I, I always say that I was a pew baby because mm -hmm. I don't know any other life than life in church. Uh -huh. um, parents were in ministry. My father pastored a church. So I've known church all my life. And what age did you plant? And the name of your ministry is Glory Worship Center. Yes. And what age did you know that we have to or I have to do more um, and plant the church? So. I've always known that I was called to some sort of ministry. Mm -hmm. um, and it didn't always start as, you know, a church or pastoring. Um, but later in life, I'm going to say, I'm not sure what age I was, but I definitely probably somewhere around a decade ago had a, this concept that we needed to be a part of ministry in a capacity more of, of a home-based thing, which evolved into a church. Later to know that God said, it's time to open up a church. Yeah. Oh my goodness, what a journey, yes. right? Because yes. how many years has it been? It's been about 20 years of ministry total, mm -hmm. but it's been seven years of being a pastor of a Ooh. church. Okay, so let's go back a little bit because I really wanna hit on the roles of women. There are a lot that still believe today that women yes. uh, cannot play the role of pastor. Yes. Can you take us back a little bit? You said your father was a pastor. Yes. Um, did you ever hear growing up that women cannot be pastors? Never heard that uh -huh. in, in my home, in the church that I grew up in, um, never heard that. In fact, it was an interesting concept to me that I learned that outside of that, which is the beauty of being able to raise your children up in your home uh -huh, is that you uh -huh. get their ear, their spirit. So I never heard that growing up in, at home that women should not be in ministry. It wasn't until I got out later in life. Yeah. So let's, let's talk a little bit about that. When was the first time that you can remember encountering that um, in how did you feel when you when you learned that some people thought that women cannot lead? So oddly enough, it was being in a homeschool group mm -hmm. amongst other women <laughs> was the first introduction that I had to um, even the strong opinion that people had that women should not be in ministry. Um, and even for them, it was not just ministry that women should not do anything except raise their children and be basically barefoot and pregnant. Mm -hmm. And what did you, Whoa. <laughs> I'm interested to know. That what... for me was so bizarre. It was as if, it, all I could remember at the time was thinking, so you mean to tell me that we were born with purpose, mm -hmm. right? Like Jeremiah, you know, that clearly God says, I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. I created you for a plan and a purpose that we were created, Genesis tells us, created to rule and to walk in dominion. But you get married and all of a sudden that just, is done. Mm -hmm. For me, I was like, really, you mean to tell me that God created us with purpose mm -hmm. all before we're supposed to get married and have children? Because once you get married and have children, that's it. There's yeah. no more purpose for you. Just have babies. Ooh. 
Yeah, I have four children. I can't imagine. It. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Yeah. So let's talk about the, the the co-laboring thing. When you, I know you and I had a conversation before, and we talked about when you're sitting at the table. Yes. A lot of times you are the only woman. The only woman. Um, how is it being a co-laborer um, in ministry? Yes. Being a lot of times the only woman. So. It's an interesting thing that happens. Um, typically when I'm called to uh, opportunities to you know, lead in city positions mm -hmm. or um, municipal uh, encounters that we have, I'm pretty much always the only woman. And if I'm not the only woman in the room, I'm the only woman who is a pastor or a senior pastor. So it's a difficult thing um, to kind of know your place because you know that you are amongst people who have various opinions about women in ministry and then just women in leadership positions, period. So mm -hmm. some people come to the table expecting you to um, have this hard disposition. Yeah. Uh, other people take your kindness and your grace for granted. Um, but there's always a, a, t a period of where you have to kind of figure out how do I navigate these waters yeah. because you're always navigating people's personal opinion before you can ever really yeah. get to the reason I'm called to the table. And being in ministry, uh, it, it, in my mind, the first thing I think is if you're trying to always walk it on eggshells, then you're wasting time that you could be doing ministry. Absolutely, absolutely. And I've had to come to the conclusion um, really honestly, just in the recent couple of years, that I refuse to entertain the subject. That in order for me to even sit back and feel like I have to defend the, the position that I'm called to, means that I believe that there's a reason that I should not be there. Mm -hmm. So I've personally come to the conclusion that God has to work all that out, yeah. right? And I, I'm just gonna do what I was called to do. I'm not confused, I just know that I'm called. Yeah. So that's, that's kind good. of the place I've come to. That's good, that's so good. You stay here. Yes. Okay, because when we come back, I get to talk to Pastor about being a woman with a calling. So go get your cup of coffee and come right back. Robbie Ra, welcome to Raw Cuts, a result-driven class designed to increase your muscle mass, decrease your body fat, and increase your energy level. You know, muscle dictates metabolism. And if you work out, you might as well look like you work out. The way you will look like you work out is if you build muscle and sculpt your body. We're gonna have a great time. I know you need it. Power965radio.com, the new sound of Buffalo is a proud supporter of the Mercedes Wilson Show. Full lineup of unique program schedules. Learn more about the station's owner, Sheila Brown, by reading her new book, 29 Years of Preparation. Welcome back. We are continuing our conversation on the role of today's woman. Let's talk about career and family, of course, with Pastor Tamara Marcella. So let's talk about career and family. Yes. 2019 there are not as many women at home taking care of the children as there used to be. Can we talk about the, the role changes and what you see maybe in ministry with that? Yes, so the roles have definitely, definitely changed. And we don't at all want to demean the, the position of being a stay-at-home mom, because thank God mm -hmm. that there are still women. It's the hardest job there is. It's the hardest <laughs> job there is. Yeah. And thank God that we still have women who are called to that, th that position. Mm -hmm. So I always have to just kind of preface that, that we don't make it sound like ministry happens outside of the home. Right because it's important that we recognize that it does still happen at home and that is for some many women where they're called to. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, de it definitely has changed with changes the dynamic of everything, yeah. of how we minister, yeah. of how we live it out, how marriages look. Um, and as a pastor, I have to recognize that constantly when, when we're doing ministry that those roles, the dynamic 
has changed. Yeah. Um, so how do you address women that feel guilty for pursuing their calling? Um, and let me, let me preface that by saying our family mm -hmm. is, is, is number one. Mm -hmm. But for women that want to work outside the home or pursue careers outside of the home, there's a yeah. guilt that comes with it. Absolutely. There's a guilt. So how do you speak to that woman? So I, I, I would love to, to eradicate the use of that word guilt, mm -hmm. right? Although that is what, what we struggle with. But I don't think that you're ever going to lose the feeling of struggle in finding balance mm -hmm. with maintaining your priorities at home. But I think that that's where you have to go. I don't think that we're ever going to not feel a sense of, should I be home more? Should I, you know, be there with my kids more? You know, should I pursue this less? And, but I believe that that friction, that struggle is, is the thing that is going to always keep yeah. us uh, aware of our priorities. Yeah. But I don't think that we're ever gonna fully lose that because it's part of us. Mm -hmm. It's part of what we do. It's part of my call, right? It's yeah. part of your call. So I don't think that we're ever gonna not feel that sense of, am I doing it right? Yeah. But it's that balance. So sometimes you have to, I don't want to say slack, but sometimes one area goes unattended. Yes. Because you're so focused on um, something of the moment. I mean, it could right. be something temporary, but you're, you're a married woman yes. and your husband is so supportive yes. of everything that you do. Yes. How do you guys balance that with the kids, ministry and the children? How do, how do you balance it all? Ooh. So <laughs> I, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so, you know, one of the things that I remind myself and I remind other busy women is that, you know, balance is not something that um, is, is ever balanced. We seek to create balance mm -hmm. in our life. Mm -hmm. um, and so you are in control of that. Create those balances. And I, I think about it like a scale, you know, that we don't ever want to have these major dips, but, but to live like this would be like Jesus. Mm -hmm. And, and we're never gonna achieve that on this earth. So yeah, there are times that the, the, the scale tips a little bit. Yeah. And, and you have to know that creating balance in your, mean, in your life means that you're okay with every now and then the balance tipping a little bit mm -hmm. in either direction. So there's seasons of life, I say, that you have to focus more on family, right? Because yeah. that just is life. Yeah. You know, kids get sick, yep. spouses go through things, um, our parents go through things. Being a woman of grace, a kingdom woman, means that I recognize that there's times that I have to pull back a little bit from career mm -hmm. and focus on my kids, focus yeah. on home. But there's also times that you're called to focus a little more on career. Right. And some things at home go a little bit yeah. by the wayside. Or people at home pick it up. Yes. A little. Yeah. I have a 16-year-old. I'm like, uh, yeah. yeah. So we're not going there today. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's talk about your career because yes. you are a two-time author. Yes. Please tell us about your book. So I love it. It's, it's, it's one of my assignments and I love speaking to the lives of women. Um, and so both of my books are volumes in a series called Staying Woman. Mm -hmm. And so I love that I have the opportunity in this season of my life to encourage women to be all that God has called you to be in home, on the forefront, in leadership, everywhere in the marketplace that God has called you to be. Mm -hmm. Staying a woman really is an opportunity to speak to those issues that we struggle with yeah. and find the balance that makes us productive and, and, and have the ability to carry out our assignments in this life. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Can you tell everybody where they can find your books? Absolutely. So you can find my book on my website, um, www.tamaramarcella.com. Also in Amazon, barnesandnobles.com, uh, pretty much any place where you can purchase books, yeah. you can get my books. This woman is everywhere. I love your ministry. Oh. I love what you're doing. I love how you're empowering women. I love it. Thank you for doing what you do. Thank you. Um, stay with me again. Because up yes. next, we get to talk one of my favorite subjects. We get to talk marriage. So stay with us. Hope, the new book by Mercedes E. Wilson, is a personal testimony of strength, determination, and faith in God helping to overcome life's struggles. Buy it in hardcover, paperback, or Kindle edition on Amazon.com today. We got Botox, we can nip, we can tuck, we can give curves, we can take curves away. You can get all kind of padding, bless the Lord. 
You can really do it. You can, you can buy an ordination. You can buy a title. Isn't that crazy? You can do all that. You got people running around getting their faces altered to look like a cat. I don't understand that. But all it is is an acknowledgement of the fact that people are grasping for somebody to tell me who I am. Somebody to tell me that I have significance. Somebody to tell me that I'm all right just the way I am. Well, whew, God sent me here today to tell you, each and every one of you, that you're all right just the way you are. You're more than all right. You're almost angelic. Woo, come on, just say it. I'm almost angelic. Come on, say it like you mean it. I'm almost angelic. Woo, doesn't that just do something to you? Just makes you go, guess what? I don't care how much I failed. I don't care how ugly it might look. I don't want your face. I don't want your body. I might want it a little bit, but I don't want your body. I don't need to drive your car. I don't need to have your approval. If you like the way I preach, great. If you don't, I'm still gonna preach. If you like the way I look, woo, I love it. But if you don't, that's all right. I like the way I look. Gotta get over this concept that you have eternity on earth. Cause you don't. You gotta love, you gotta live, you gotta fight, you gotta work, you gotta dream like your life dependent on it because it does. Because it does. You're gonna have to answer for it. You're gonna have to answer for what you did in this life. You're gonna have to answer for what you didn't do that God put inside of you in this life. Oh, eternity matters. Everything that we do here matters. But don't live like it's all about tomorrow. It's about today. Jesus is coming by to check your fruit today. Mark it on your calendar when you leave here today. Buy yourself a balloon. And every time you feel like I have eternity to get up, you don't have tomorrow. You don't have someday. It's not a day of the week. Sunday, Monday, someday. It ain't a day of the week. You put it out of your mind. It's procrastination. Get up today and write it on your calendar when you leave. Today is the day that I begin to bring forth fruit. See, it ain't just about being pretty. Cause if you're pretty and you ain't got no power, you get stuck. You get left behind. You get mud on your face. But girls, I'm gonna need you to be pretty and powerful. I'm gonna need you to know who you are so that you can be strong enough to get out of it. Okay, welcome back to the Mercedes Wilson Show. We get to talk marriage. Let's talk, I love, this is one of my favorite. I love it, love it, love it. Now, um, let's talk a little bit about balance because I'm sure there's some folks watching that are saying, there is no way, <laughs> there is no way yes. that she is balancing all this and still yes. has a healthy marriage and still has healthy children. Yes. Can we talk balance? Absolutely. So as we mentioned before, you create balance in your life. Mm -hmm. and, and the minute you lose focus of that is the minute that you feel like you're going crazy. Mm -hmm. and, and, tr and there are, are moments that I feel insanity creeping up my spine. <laughs> so I'm not alone. You're not alone. Okay, You're good, not alone. Good. We're not alone. Um, I, but the thing that grounds us is that I've learned to set aside all of those old captions that, you know, it's June Cleaver, you know, I, I don't mm -hmm, clean my house mm -hmm. and heels and dresses. You sometimes have to hire a cleaning person. Mm -hmm. You begin to prioritize what that balance looks like for you. Mm -hmm. For me, mm -hmm. I went from a homeschool mom that cooked, that made my beef jerky, made my own soap. And now life looks like we order a whole lot of pizza. And, <laughs> <laughs> um, mm -hmm. you, you know, you keep fast food on speed dial. Mm -hmm. Grubhub works, oh, yeah. but there are days that I cook. Yeah. 
instead of it being an everyday thing. So you create balance in your life, something that works for you and your family. And I like that, something that works for you and your family. No yes. family is cut out nope. to be nope. the same. No. Let's talk about the roles in marriage. Yes. Because that's huge. Um, what does submission look like, so, being a woman? Submission, for me, what I believe I understand of scripture, submission means that we are subjected to. In other words, we could just bring it down to say it real simply, I'm accountable to him, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. He's the one I answer to. He's the one that in our home, he is the head. He, you know, he gets to have the last word in our home. He, mm -hmm. He's the one that I'm accountable to, that our family is accountable to. So what if your husband says, Tamara, you're doing too much. <laughs> so, <laughs> what would happen? I, mean, I, I do hear that a lot. You know, you're, you're doing too much. Um, so, as far as submission goes, I, I think that that's a power-packed question because mm -hmm. I this is why I I tell single women a lot: be careful of your choices. Like, choose in alignment with your destiny when you choose a husband, because your spouse um, needs to be able to run at the pace that you want to run. Um, and so we're really, really good at that together as partners. And so would my husband ever say, you know, you're doing too much? I would say, I don't know if that would happen in our home, in our life, because he's very aware of the fact that this is not just something I want to do. This yeah. is something that God has called us mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. And so keeping that in your cognizant place, you know, this is not our gig, right? Like we're not just out there selling cars and going, right. I just want to make a million dollars. So we're out there doing what we believe God has assigned us to in right. this earth. Right. So, you know, when you're aware of that, you're aware that I don't get to really dictate how God has called you to spend your season. Mm -hmm. And you don't really get to dictate that. We are constantly being in a place that we seek God mm -hmm. regularly. Yeah. Um, but my husband mm -hmm. was called to handle me. I love it. I right? love that. My husband was called to handle me. Yes. I like that. Can you please encourage our viewers, um, the women that may be watching and struggling with their calling um, or feeling like they're doing too much or the guilt. I know you say mm -hmm. you don't want to use that mm -hmm. word, but mm -hmm. can you can you speak to that woman? Absolutely. Absolutely. So I want to say just first of all that God gives us a grace to run this race that he's called us to. Um, and that just means that there's a beautiful under network of heavenly provision provided and assigned just to you to complete the assignment that God has given you. I have to say that first of all, because when we start to feel like I don't have what it takes, when we start to feel like I'm cheating my kids, you're not cheating them. You're giving them a beautiful example of how to pursue their dreams and their goals. Yes. If it's not for you, who would show them that in life's difficult moments, you continue on so that you can complete your assignment? One of my favorite scriptures is when Jesus says, Father, I have completed my assignment right down to the last detail, mm -hmm. that that you've called me to do here on earth. And that is my goal for me in life. I want to be able to say, God, I've completed my assignment right down to the last detail. Yeah. So run hard, stay in pursuit yeah. and create your balance, knowing that God has called you to what you're doing right now in this season. All right. So I want to thank Pastor Marcella for coming today. Thank you. I'm sure you helped so many people. I'm uh. sure you helped so many people. And I want to encourage you to get her books. She's yes. an author of two books, Staying Woman, and we'll have more information at the end of the show on where you can get these books, but you need this book in your life. So we'll be right back with the Mercedes Moment. Wardrobe for the Mercedes Wilson Show was provided by Clothes Mentor in Tonawana, New York. Grade A looks for less.
So today's moment comes from 1 Corinthians 13 and 7 in the Amplified. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes, is ever ready to believe the best of every person, and its hopes are fadeless under all circumstances, and it endures everything without weakening. Think about that scripture. It's heavy, right? Love bearing up under any and everything, the expected and the unexpected in our lives. This can only be done under the power and mindset of our God. Life throws too much at us to do it any other way. The fact that the scripture says love bears up under means that we are strong. We uphold things and that means that we are constantly leaning in on God. The second point that I want to hit on is that it believes the best of every person. Think about that, that's a lot. How hard can that be, right? You mean my coworker? My teenager that may be maturing and growing and thinks that they know it all? My spouse that has disagreements with me every once in a while? My friends, my family, strangers? Yes, everyone. It amazes me how negative we can think of people that we don't even know. And that negativity is contagious and can make us think the worst in others. Believing the best in others not only allows us to grow as people, but it can pull out the best in others. Encouraging words go a long way. The one thing that the blood of Jesus showed on the cross was that it provided reconciliation. We are called as believers to be agents of reconciliation. And that is exactly what believing the best in others does. Try it. Learn more about the Mercedes Wilson Show and all that we do on my website at MercedesEWilson.com. Give us your input, give us your show ideas, and put in your prayer requests all right online. Thank you for tuning into the Mercedes Wilson Show, and we'll see you next Tuesday from 1.30 to 2 p.m. Love you all. I'm